Hey, what's up, everybody? So I've been dying to get to uh, the nitty gritty of uh, just some of the effect models in the in the head rush, um, and I filmed this episode on chorus like three times, and I just didn't like it. It got too long. I talked too much, um, all of my usual stuff, and I didn't feel like I was really sharing anything uh, new or useful because uh, I was kind of trying to explain uh, like from the ground up what effects do and. Uh, how they, they really function in the real world in like an analog pedal. Um, and to tell you the truth, you've got the JHS pedals channel, uh, the Wampler pedals channel, um, Dan and Mick from that pedal show, who are um, a million times more knowledgeable about that kind of stuff than I am. So I figured, why rehash um, all this great information that's already out there uh, from people presenting it way better than I even would? Um, so what I want to do instead is we're going to cover the chorus and the multi-chorus in this one, um, and we're going to go with just, uh, basically how I use these effects personally, um, no kind of generic from the ground up thing, this is how I would approach using them, um, and one of the key things for me is I'm very careful with modulations, uh, because I think most of them have, uh, to me, for, for the kind of music I like, they have a very limited range to uh, some of the parameters. Um, but So enough talking so this one doesn't get too long again. Uh, let's go check out some sounds. Alright, so just a quick look at what I've got going on here. Uh, I'm just running a, uh, a Soldano rig, and uh, I have some clean and, and uh, some crunch going on. Uh, so let's go over how I would use chorus in a clean situation first. Um, this is probably where I use it the most. Um, largely because my band, um, is, uh, very, very 80s oriented. Uh, we're trying to write a lot of, like, 21st century hair metal kind of stuff, and it's just a, a very era-appropriate effect. Um, but anyway, this is my, my clean sound just on its own. <laughs> And then um, let's check out the regular chorus pedal first, and we'll go through the multi-chorus a little bit as well. Um, the multi-chorus I really like for, uh, for, for leads because of some of the parameters in it, but um, just the plain old chorus is nice and simple. So um, if you open the default mono uh, preset that Headrush gives you with that, you get this. Now, on a clean tone, even that is a little bit too much for me. Uh, like I was talking about the, um, what I just find a limited usable range um, in modulation for my needs. So the first thing I do, I like the rate for um, like rhythmic kind of stuff, um, whether dirty or clean, at right about 0 0.7 uh, hertz. So we're good there. Um, depth is basically just your mix control. And uh, forty percent is pretty good. I don't want um, I don't want to lose all of my uh, my dynamics and pick attack to uh, a modulation effect. I, I want to remain present in the mix, uh, basically. Um, if you don't know what the feedback does, it kind of creates like a self oscillating effect. <laughs> uh, I don't have much use for that, so I leave that guy right at zero. Um, now a weird quirk is you have to have the mix width at right around 50% or um, kind of close, so I like to put it at 50, uh, just to be right in the center. Um, even when you're running mono, which I always am, I never do stereo stuff, uh, but basically um, it's I think it's kind of a weird quirk in the head rush how it handles uh, signals. Um, if you have it all the way to 100 or 0, you won't hear the effect. Um, so be careful with that, but yeah, 50% is pretty good. See, it doesn't really change anything too much. All right, so yeah, like I was saying, so 0 0.7, and uh, this is kind of it. I'm going to go to the middle position here, and uh, for clean stuff, this is, this is kind of where I live. 
um, as, as far as chorus goes. Now, if you were to put that same effect on a uh, on a heavy tone, you get this. Uh, so it's very cool. It's there. It's not overpowering. Um, it's definitely making a bit of a statement as far as the tone goes. Um, it reminds me a lot of, uh, not White Lion, but another band called Lion, um, that actually did, uh, like the, um, the, the, the soundtrack for the Transformers, the movie, the, the cartoon back in the 80s. Uh, it's so very reminiscent of, of, uh, that band's two albums for me, um. But, uh, so anyway, that is about it already. Um, we can do a lead tone with the regular chorus. Uh, so let, let's see what, uh, let's see what happens with that. So, um, we've got, we'll turn the delay off for now. That, that sounds like this. a bit too much so um i, I really want to cover this more in the multi-chorus but basically my secret for using chorus in a lead tone is turn the rate all the way down and the depth to 100 percent um this kind of gives you like a slightly uh pitch shifted uh like doubling effect um which could be a little bit redundant because we do have the d2 in effect in the modulation category on the head rush um but i like doing it this way um Especially if you're the kind of guy that just likes less parameters, the D2 and may just have a few too many things going on for you. But uh, so now that sounds like this. Uh, so um, about covers it for clean. So and uh, I always. I always keep the chorus behind the amp um, as if it were in the effects loop of a real amp. Um, there is legitimate use for chorus in front of an amp, especially if that amp is clean. Um, I'm just an always behind the amp kind of guy. Uh, so anyway, let's move on over to the multi-chorus, which has the same uh, parameters plus a few extras. So you have the rate um, and the depth again, and then the option to add more voices uh, up to six. So, um, so between three four and six, those are your options. Uh, this is kind of like what we would call tri-chorus um, and then some, I guess. Uh, then you also have a separate mix control, which works exactly how it says it does. It controls wet-dry, um, which is strange to me because so does the depth control. Um, but I generally just keep this guy at 50%. Um, but before we change too much stuff here, let's hear how that sounds with that rate at 0 0.7, just like the other one, and the voices, uh, and the voices at three on a clean tone. So this is a cool sound too. Almost like uh, like a fake 12 string kind of thing going on there. Uh, so very cool, easy to get sound. Um, with a clean tone. Um, and then if you add the other voices to it, you're basically just adding more layers of, of the, uh, the modulated signal. Um, it can get a little messy and chirpy sounding, but that sounds like this. <laughs> Now, 
Now, um, the 80s weren't really uh, like a very subtle era when it came to slamming on effects, um, reverb, chorus, and compressor. Uh, but for me, and, and especially when, when we're out playing live, um, that's a little bit too much going on. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a quick setup that I would do. So I'd, for a clean, again, I would keep the voices at 3. Um, the depth and mix at 50% is just fine. Uh, so unlike the regular chorus, in the multi-chorus, you don't have to have the width at 50%. Uh, I think it's a weird programming quirk um, where the, the head rush's routing is concerned. Um, but anyway, so the pre-delay is going to be a big part of uh, when I use this multi-chorus for dirty tones. Um, cause it basically retains your pick attack for just a few, uh, milliseconds before the effect, uh, kind of colors over your tone. Um, it's a lot like, like a, like a ducking effect in, uh, delay pedal. Um, and then for the shapes, you have try and, uh, sign. Basically what's going on in there is sign is kind of a more rounded, smoother, uh, shape to the sound. Uh, I don't know if it'll really come through, but... And then triangular is a little more edgy, uh, kind of more aggressive, a little ruder. Uh, if you're going to sweat those kind of details in general, I would use the sign for... Uh, my clean tones just to to round them out and fatten them up a little bit and then triangular waveform for uh, uh, like the heavy rhythms and lead stuff so uh, which is where we're headed so we're gonna leave it on triangular uh, then you have the low cut which basically just cuts bottom end off of the um, the replicated modulated layers um, really cool if, if you're gonna use this for uh, for for any kind of um, like high gain lead stuff because um, it's just another level of control for um, getting the bottom end under control on, on uh, really heavy amp. Um, so anyway, I'm sure you guys all want to hear what I do for the heavy stuff. Uh, we're going to keep the rate at 0 0.7 uh, for now, which I think is a little much on the multi-chorus for heavy rhythm. Uh, but we're definitely going to take that pre-delay up to 90% uh, here because um, we want... Um, we want a lot of our pick attack over the effect. Uh, and on clean, that does this. If you take it all the way out, maybe you can hear the difference. Uh, you can hear the warbliness of the effect is uh, it's right on top of those pick attacks, like immediately with no pre-delay. But if you have the pre-delay on, um, you retain kind of that initial punch of the note. Uh, I don't really know how else to explain it, but that is what it does. Um, so, all right, we can move on to some heavy stuff here. Um, so I just threw that into the, uh, the overdrive channel of the Saldano and without changing anything that sounds like this. Probably a little too much on the rate for me still uh, once we're in multi-chorus mode and uh, I'm not gonna change the voices to six it's just way too much um, but if you try like a 0 0.3 I think it cleans up a little bit let's give that a shot oh and uh, you can actually for rhythm stuff 
you can turn the mix and the depth down to like 40, just get a little bit of your normal sound back. <laughs> So that's a lot better, a lot cleaner. Um, kind of cleaned up some of the junk there. Uh, show you really, show you really quick what the low cut does. Uh, so it won't get rid of, won't get rid of it in the way that like an IR, the filter in the IR block or a pair EQ does. But uh, it gets rid of what it needs to. Uh, you don't need to have it at a thousand. That's pretty extreme. Uh, but so let's go for a quick lead tone here. And uh, yeah, you can put it to like 350 without really uh, losing too much bottom end, but shelving off just enough that you don't want anyway. Um, so let's go for a lead tone here with the multi-chorus on. And we're going to bring that rate down to 0 0.1 now, just like we did with the regular chorus. And uh, we're going to put the depth at 100, but leave the mix at 40, and you get this. <laughs> That is basically it. Um, so in the band stuff, whenever I'm using chorus um, or multi-chorus, that is how I do it. Um, I really don't have much of much more to show you for that. Um, so thanks for watching, guys.